I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them madest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. And we end there this morning, and we trust that the Lord, and we do know that the Lord will bless the reading from His own precious truth. This morning, child of God, I want to ask you a wee question. The wee question I want to ask you this morning is this. Have you ever, have you ever been troubled by your conscience? Have you ever been troubled by your conscience? For men, you, your conscience, your conscience is a very powerful thing. Your conscience can cause things to play in your mind. You know, child of God, your conscience can bring things before you that perhaps may have happened years ago. And your conscience, your conscience won't let it rest. I wonder this morning, have you ever been troubled? by your conscience. Maybe there's someone in this meeting this morning and at this very moment you're being troubled by your conscience. Your conscience is a powerful thing, child of God. Your conscience is a powerful thing. You know, it's a wonderful thing to have a clear conscience. For a man, you a clear conscience is a good thing to have. And many times, because of our conscience, our conscience stopped us from doing things that would lead into a horrible case. It's a wonderful thing to have a clear conscience. But it's a horrible thing to have no conscience. You ever ask yourself the question, what makes people do what they do today and they can go to their bed and they sleep like a log? You want to know why? I'll tell you why. Because they've no conscience. And I wonder this morning, child of God, we you ever troubled with your conscience? Jeb Magruder, who was an aide to President Nixon during the Watergate scandal, was actually jailed because of the Watergate scandal. He told the Senate Investigation Committee, where did it all go wrong? And he answered the question, we conned ourselves we conned ourselves into thinking that we were doing nothing wrong. And he continued to say, by the time 
that we were doing things illegal. We discovered then it was all out of control. You know, child of God, the worst mistake you and I and the whole lot of us can make is to know that we're doing wrong and conning ourselves to try and believe that we're not. And that's why God give you a conscience. And that's why God give me a conscience. And when the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of God, the Holy Spirit, was writing this letter to Timothy, Paul had something very important to say to Timothy. And what Paul wanted to say to Timothy, God wants to say to you. And God wants to say to me, friends, concerning our conscience. And the text that God's going to speak to through us this morning is verse number 19 in the scripture reading that we have had this morning. Now let's listen to what God inspired Paul to write to Timothy and what God wants to say to us this morning. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19. Let's all read it now. Paul says, holding faith, having an, sorry, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. Now let me repeat that, for it's good to repeat it. Holding faith, Paul says, and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. Or there's many a Christian have made spiritual shipwreck over the years. Because they wouldn't listen to their conscience. And have made complete shipwrecks. Now listen, child of God, hear something. If you ever make shipwreck concerning your testimony, your testimony, no matter how hard you try, will never be restored to where it once was. If you make some shipwreck in some way, your integrity will be shipwrecked. And if you make a shipwreck of your integrity, you'll never get your integrity where it once was. And child of God, if you make some shipwreck in some way because you won't listen to your conscience, your trust will never be fully recovered. And you know, if you've been attending our Bible class on a Thursday night, you know what you'll have learned? You'll have learned tonight, that, this morning, that nobody believed more in a clear conscience than the Apostle Paul. When we went through chapter number two, I can tell you there's many ways Paul lived with a, with a conscience, friends. Do you know what Paul lived in fear of? Paul lived in the fear that whatever thing he would say, whatever he would do, might hinder some poor sinner from coming to Christ. And that's a good thing to have playing on your conscience. Boys, I, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to do anything that would hinder some soul from coming to Christ. And another thing Paul had a conscience over, the thing that troubled him most, that he didn't want to say anything, and he didn't want to do anything, anything that would cause some saint to stumble. And child of God, I hope that's the conscience we have. That we would live in fear of being a hindrance from some soul from coming to Christ. Because the way we live, and the way we talk, and the way we behave. And he also had the conscience, this conscience, 
of doing something, saying something that would cause another brother or a sister to fall. Oh, child of God, have that conscience. Paul, the great apostle, could say in Acts of the Apostles 24, verse 16, listen to it, and herein, he says, and herein, do I exercise myself to have always a good conscience, void of offense towards God and towards men? I and towards men. There's one thing God will do that men won't do if you fall. I'll tell you what men, God can do. God can put whatever you do under the blood and out of his mind. I'll tell you, man will not put it out of his mind. Man outside these four walls, do you see the world? Do you see the unsaved? Man, I'll tell you, they won't let you forget for what you've done. And that's why Paul always exercised himself to have a conscience, void of offense, not only towards God, but towards men too, so that nobody could point the finger. Now look at the text of what Paul has here concerning our conscience. First of all, there's the, cru the crucial command that is instructed. You know what he says? Holding faith. Holding faith. Now, what does Paul mean when he says holding faith? Well, I'll tell you what he means. He means what Paul told him in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 14. Now listen to what he says. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Now listen, friend, you know what Paul's saying? Holding faith means continuing what you have learned in Holy Scripture. Do you know what we need our consciences saturated with? We need our conscience this morning saturated with the Word of God. That's what we need. And Paul says, holding faith. Martin Luther says, my conscience has been taken captive by the Word of God. Oh, to have a conscience being taken captive by the Word of God. He said to the Pope in that day, My conscience has been taken captive by the Word of God, and to go against my conscience is neither good nor safe. And he denounced the Catholic faith. Oh, child of God, we need our consciences captivated by the Word of the living God this morning. We need our consciences saturated by Holy Scripture. Holy Scripture. Holding faith this morning. What did the psalmist say? 119 verse 11. What did he say? Thy word have I hid where? In my heart that I may not sin against thee. You know, child of God, we need to get the Word of God in here this morning. In here. We need to be in God's Word every day. We need to be learning God's Word every day. We need to be reading God's Word every day. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6, God said to Moses, and unto you I give you this word that I command you, that thou shalt keep this word in thine heart. Do you know what your conscience is like? Here's a wee picture I'm going to give you this morning. Do you know what your conscience is like? It's like a window. Do you know, dear, when you get up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? You open the blinds, don't you? You pull the curtains. Why? To let the light in. Now listen, the window doesn't create the light. The window can't create light. But it's the window that allows the light in. Your conscience is like that window. Psalm 119, verse 130. The entrance of thy word that giveth light. And child of God, for your conscience to bring the light in, 
Friends, listen, you need to get the Word of God in and read it every day to enlighten your conscience. Your conscience like a window. Holding faith, he says. During the mission in Castle of Caulfield, I happened to say to the folks gathered there one night, what's wrong with our young people? Why is young people going about depressed today? When I was young, I hadn't time to be depressed. What's wrong with young people today, I said. And I says, I'm going to give you the answer. And I told them, the problem with many of our young people today, young people now are not being sent to Sunday school. not been sent to Sunday school. There's a generation in Kilkeel, and listen, we're coming down with churches, and I'll tell you something now, there's a whole clan of young people out there, children, and they're not going to hear Sunday school. Do you know there's people in Kilkeel, youngsters, children today, who don't even know what a Bible is? And I told the folk in Castle Caulfield, what's, coming, what's wrong with our society today? Young parents are no longer sending their children to Sunday school. I'll tell you, there's things that you'll learn in Sunday school, a child will learn in Sunday school that will stick with them through life. Holding faith, child of God, the command that is crucial here, that is instructed, it means filling your mind and your conscience with the Word of God. It's believing the Word of God, and I'll tell you, it's living the Word of God. The command, crucial command that is instructed, holding faith, ah, but listen, do you see something else he puts out here? There's a clear conscience that is important. Listen to this, and a good conscience. You know what a good conscience is? It's a warning voice that goes on in here, child of God. A warning voice that goes on in here, that speaks in here, that is a safeguard and protects us from offending. That's what your conscience is. And Paul says one of the great blessings a child of God can have is a good conscience. Holding faith and a good conscience. I'll tell you, let's think about Daniel this morning. Away down in Babylon, he was mixed with paganism, surrounded with paganism. And when the king come to give him the king's meat, because of his conscience, he wouldn't compromise. His conscience wouldn't let him. You remember the day when Potiphar's wife come and flaunting herself to Joseph? Come, Joseph, lie with me, Joseph. He she ha was handing everything to Joseph on a plate. What did Joseph say? How can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? His conscience wouldn't let him. Remember Pilate's wife? If anybody had a good conscience, it was Pilate's wife. She went to her husband, Pontius Pilate, and said to him, Listen, Pontius, listen to me. Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Thank God for a good conscience if you have one. And we need to captivate our conscience this morning. Captivated by the very living word of God. You know what's missing today, child of God? The missing ingredient today in the Christian life. I'll tell you what it is. It's simple. It's the fear of God. You know what we need today? We need today to get gripped again by the fear of God. I've told you before I had an old uncle, James. Never went to church, apart from funerals and weddings. But do you see that man the day, that man when he was alive, that man wouldn't have much as lifted a yard brush on a Lord's day. Oh, he says you wouldn't do that on a Sunday. He says it wouldn't, he says it would all go wrong for you. You wouldn't do that on a Sunday. You wouldn't do this on a Sunday. Oh, you wouldn't do that on a Sunday. I'll tell you something. There was more fear of God in the non-Christian back then than there is in some Christians today. There was a fear of God in the unsaved then. Even the unconverted had a fear. The unsaved had a fear. And I'll tell you, the fear of God, friend, gives you a good conscience this morning.
Tell me this. Is there somebody here today, listen, I don't know. I'm only God's messenger. And you've been tested with something. You've been tempted with something. And there's a wee voice saying to you today, don't do it. In God's name will you listen to that wee voice. Don't do it. You know what's wrong, love. That wee voice is telling you, don't you do it. Oh, you want to say something to somebody, and your wee conscience inside this wee voice is telling you, listen, don't you be saying it. Don't you say it, sir. Don't you say it, brother. And then you get another wee voice saying, sure, listen, everybody else is doing it. So why would you not do it for? Everybody else is doing it. And they got away with it. Ah, listen, listen. Everybody else isn't you. Just because so and so did it and get away with it doesn't mean you'll get away with it, love. Doesn't mean you'll get away with it, brother. Not at all. God give you a conscience for you to listen to it. And say, love God, if you're on the fence this morning and you're about to sway one way or the other way, and maybe you're about to sway the wrong way, listen, for, for goodness sake, listen to your conscience, love. Listen to your conscience, brother. God give you a conscience not to get you into trouble. God give you a conscience to keep you out of it. Captivate your conscience by the word of God and I'll tell you, you'll have a good conscience. You'll have a good conscience. And if you're a good conscience, I'll tell you this, you'll be owing nobody any money. If you're a good conscience, you're not speaking about behind other believers' backs if you're a good conscience. If you're a good conscience, you're not judging other people if you're a good conscience at it. A clear conscience that is important. A communist government in China many years ago employed an author to do a biography in Hudson Taylor. And this author delved into the, everything that he could find about Hudson Taylor to try and distort the truth to make, to make Hudson Taylor to be some evil person in their land. And this author examined Taylor's life, Hudson Taylor's life. And he learned everything about Hudson Taylor that he could learn. You know what happened? What the communist government of China that day was trying to do played on his conscience and he couldn't write it. And in risking his own life, he failed to write it. And because of what he learned about Hudson Taylor and the way he lived and the message that he preached, that author came to faith in the Lord Jesus and was wonderfully saved. It pays, child of God, to possess a good conscience this morning. But thirdly, look at the careless choice that is insane. Listen to it. Let's listen to it this morning. This is God's word. This isn't my word. Would some having put away concerning faith. What does that mean? That means this morning those who choose not to listen to their conscience. That's what that means. That's those this morning who have rejected the voice of their conscience. They are those who have violated their conscience. Violated their conscience. Judas Iscariot sitting at the Last Supper said, Lord, is it I? He violated his conscience and went to soul the Lord and betrayed the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Violated his conscience. Peter, what about you? Peter drops the head too. And he says, I told the Lord, I told the Lord I was going to go to prison and I told the Lord I was going to die. And at the first turn of day, I was denying him and I denied him three times. He violated his conscience. Pilate, 
The very fact Pilate could say, not once, not twice, but three times, I find no fault in this man, violated his conscience by handing him over to the crowd to be crucified. What about you, Herod? What about you? I violated my conscience too. I knew John the Baptist was a good man. I used to listen to him gladly. But I went against my conscience. And I got him beheaded. Brother and sister in Christ this morning, listen, don't you ever go against your conscience if your conscience is being fed by the Word of God. Please don't, child of God, please don't. I was watching a program on, not too often I get time to watch TV, but there's a program on one night about the world's greatest killers. And they were being interviewed. And many of them said their first killing, they couldn't sleep for weeks after it. Couldn't sleep for weeks. They went out and done another killing. Same thing happened. Went out and done another one. Until it come just like second nature. Trouble them no more. You know, friend, when Paul was writing this letter to Timothy, he spoke about conscience three or four times. And here's what he said. He says there are those whose conscience are seared with a hot iron. Their conscience that they once have doesn't trouble them anymore. You take a thief. You take a thief who steals ten pence. You know what the first thing he'll tell you? He says you'll always imagine somebody has seen you. And this is what he says. This is what a thief said. He says the worst thing about being a thief is not getting caught. The worst thing about a thief is getting away with it at the start. You get away with it. It just escalates and escalates out of control. And your conscience no longer troubles you. Now listen, child of God, tell me. Is there something your conscience is troubling you about this morning? This is God's message. This isn't my message. This is God's message. Is there something you're being tempted to do? Don't you put away your conscience this morning. You listen to your conscience. God has given you a conscience. And to go, listen, to go against your conscience is going against God's Word and going against your conscience is going against God's will. Now, the fourth and final thing is the crippling crisis that is immense. Look at what it says. Have made shipwreck. You know, there's many Christians have made shipwreck of their lives. Many a God's servant have made shipwrecks of their ministry. And if you make spirit, you'll shipwreck this morning. Listen, you'll not lose your salvation, thank God. You'll not lose your salvation. But you will lose your testimony. You will lose your integrity. You will lose your trust. And you'll give every Tom, Dick, and Harry outside these four walls every excuse to mock you. You'll give every Tom, Dick, and Harry outside these four walls every excuse to mock Christianity. What did Nathan say to David? What did Nathan say to David? When David sinned, this is what Nathan said. You have given the enemies of the Lord cause to blaspheme. Oh, I. 
Child of God, listen. Hold faith this morning. And a good conscience. Aye, a good conscience. Never you put away a good conscience, brother. Never you put away a good conscience, sister. Too many have and have made shipwreck of their lives and of their testimonies and of their homes and their families and their marriages and everything. Acts 23, verse 1, when Paul was before the council, he said this, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. A good conscience will be fed by the Word of God. Did you get that? A good conscience will be fed by the Word of God, and a good conscience will follow the will of God. You know what you need? You know what I need especially? I, myself, we all need, you know what we all need this morning? We all need a closer walk with God. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. May that be of none of us here this morning. And may God bless His Word to all of our hearts. We're going to sing that closing hymn, Oh, for a closer walk with God, a calm and heavenly frame, a light to shine upon the road that leads me to the Lamb. We're going to just sing the first two and the last two verses, please. We'll leave out verse 3 as time is gone, please. Thank you.
thank thee, Lord, for thy speaking voice. Now, Lord, give us by thy grace. Lord, help this morning to apply that word. And Lord, for every one of us, myself especially and included, give us a conscience, Lord, that's as sharp as a, as a knife, a conscience that will trouble us, and a consciousness that will ever keep us walking in thy way. Lord, we pray for any that must leave. Keep them safe, Lord, as they journey home. And for those of us redeemed this morning, as we gather now around this table to remember the Lord, 